Hi all, it's Megan Shamis, and I'm the Director of Marketing for the Fido Alliance. As you may know, we introduced a new concept in early 2022, which is multi-device Fido credentials. You may have heard this referred to as Passkey by many. Passkey aims to make Fido authentication more usable and available in the consumer space. What they are is a new option for users to access Fido sign-in credentials on many other devices, even new ones and even across platforms, without having to re-enroll every device on every account. Then in May, 2022, Apple, Google, and Microsoft announced plans to support Passkey on their respective platforms. This news was, it's really a huge step forward in making cryptographically secure and passwordless Fido sign-ins more usable and available to all of us. But what does the user experience look like in this world of passwordless sign-ins? I'm excited to turn things over to Christian Brand of Google, who will show the world's first demonstration of Passkey in action. Following Christian's demo, Tim Capali of Microsoft will break down each step that you saw. So Christian, let me turn it over to you. Hi folks, I'm Christian and I'm a product manager at Google. First, we're gonna look at how passkeys work on Android. So I open Chrome and I navigate to TriBank and I attempt to log in to my banking profile here by entering my username and my password. Once I hit sign in, the website automatically detects that I'm on a platform that supports passkeys and it gives me the option to create one. I say, yes, please give me a passkey. Navigate through the options here and I note that passkeys will be safely backed up to the cloud. I'm gonna to touch my fingerprint and my passkey will be created. Of course, now if I sign out of TriBank, I can come back tomorrow. I simply click into the account name field. I see the passkey I just created being offered up. I select it, touch my fingerprint on the sensor, and I magically signed in. Of course, this also works if I decide to download the application from the Google Play Store. So I decide to download the TriBank app, open the app, here, again, I get the option to sign in with a account or I can sign in with a passkey. Let's at this point click the sign in with a passkey option to see how that would work. So if I click sign in with a passkey, my passkeys get listed. I click the one I want to use to sign in, simply touch the fingerprint sensor, and instantly I'm signed in. So passkeys created on the web also works on the app and vice versa. So the next day, I want to go to TriBank on my Windows laptop and sign in with Edge. Here, I'm going to click sign in with a passkey. I'm going to choose to use my phone. I'll pick up my phone, open the camera, and point it at the QR code of the laptop. Select user passkey. Now I'm going to allow the laptop and the phone to securely communicate over Bluetooth so the laptop and the phone know that they're near each other. At that point, I will simply select the passkey that I just created, touch my fingerprint on the sensor, and I should instantly be signed in on Edge on Windows. Now at this point, it gives me the option to create a passkey locally on my Windows machine, so I don't need to keep using my phone to sign into TriBank every time. So I'm gonna say create me a passkey. And at this point, Windows Hello should kick in and give me the option to touch my fingerprint on the sensor to establish the passkey. And instantly a passkey should now be created on my machine directly. So if I now sign out of TriBank and I come back tomorrow, I can simply click on signing with a passkey. And remember now I don't need to grab my phone the second time around because I literally have a local passkey on my Windows machine. So I'm gonna to touch my fingerprint to the sensor and instantly I should be signed in to try that. Now let's say the next day I wanna to go to my MacBook and I wanna sign in using Safari. So I'm gonna do exactly the same, navigate to TriBank, hit the sign in with a passkey option. I'm gonna say I wanna use a phone and again, I can use my uh, Android phone to scan this particular QR code to allow these two devices to talk to one another. I select the passkey on my phone, click the fingerprint sensor, and I'm signed in to Safari as well. And here I can do exactly the same thing that I just did on Windows. I can create a local passkey, touch my fingerprint on my touch bar, this should allow a passkey to be created locally on my MacBook. So now when I go and sign out and I come back to TriBank on my uh, MacBook, I sign in with a passkey, simply touch my fingerprint on the sensor and immediately I'm signed in. So remember that I just created a passkey on my MacBook. What's really cool is that passkeys get synchronized to my iCloud account. So not only is my passkey available on the MacBook that I created it on, it's also available everywhere else I'm signed into my iCloud account. 
and that includes my iPhone. So if I were to go to my iPhone here and I open Safari, I visit the TriBank website and I hit sign in with a pass key. The same pass key that I just created on my MacBook will be available for use here. So I can simply say continue, look at my camera, and immediately I'm signed into TriBank. Now we're going to ask Tim to walk through these uh, scenarios and explain what happened in a little bit more detail. Thanks, Christian. Hi, everyone. My name is Tim Capali, and I'm a standard architect at Microsoft working on this passkey initiative. And we want to take some time to break down what you just saw from Christian's demo. Step by step, we'll go through each of the components, what you saw, and what enables it. And before we actually do that, I just want to take one second um, to, to look at the two major components and specifications that actually enable this functionality, uh, both for passkey and kind of the existing world that we have today with security keys and, and the kind of the FIDO ecosystem. So there's really two pieces. One is WebAuthn, which is really what developers interact with. So that's the browser API that allows the developer to say, hey, I want to register a credential or authenticate using one of those credentials. So that is, um, uh, as I mentioned, a browser API. That's, that's what most people actually interact with in terms of developers. And on the other side, we have what's called the client to authenticator protocol. And that's what platforms like the operating systems, let's say, and security key manufacturers or even other authenticators that aren't security keys that need to talk back to um, the browser. That's actually what they need to go implement. And, and, and that, that's one of the more complicated ones. But the nice thing is that, that developers never have to worry about CTAP. It, it's something that a very small slice of the community needs to worry about. But that's where kind of the magic happens, right? That's where all the Bluetooth and the NFC and USB, all the kind of low level things all magically flow uh, between the operating system and the authenticator. And the reason we bring that up is a lot of the magic that we're going to see here today leverages both of these uh, specifications with some enhancements that enable this new use case. All right, so let's jump into what we saw from uh, Christian. So uh, he was on his Android phone, went to TriBank, and the only credential he had at that point was a password. You know, typical scenario. Uh, maybe you also have to do an SMS verification, but you're using some form of uh, shared secret and then some form of out of band. Uh, a message or email, for example, uh, and it's not a great user experience, right? Nobody likes passwords, nobody likes OTPs. Um, so TriBank was actually able to detect that Christian's device, this Pixel, uh, supported passkey and was able to uh, you know, create an interstitial that says, hey, but why don't you upgrade to passkey? Uh, we think this is a great experience for you and you should upgrade your account. So at that point, um, this is standard WebAuthn. Uh, so the, the TriBank developer more or less you know, use the WebAuthn API to prompt the user to create a passkey. And what that did is it invoked the uh, Android authenticator, right? So as I mentioned, that, that WebAuthn API bridges uh, the relying party or the website to the browser. And then the browser has its own way of talking down into the operating system to say, hey, I need to do WebAuthn. And in this case, I would like to create a passkey. So uh, now that the user has said they do want to continue, you know, Christian click continue there. The last thing to do is perform what's called a user verification check. Um, on a phone, this is typically going to be a biometric, um, but it could also fall back to a PIN. Um, on things like security keys that we've used in the past in higher security environments, that was typically a, a PIN. A lot of those devices didn't have biometrics. So the fact that so many of these devices, um, the phone, the tablets, the laptops have biometrics significantly improve this user experience because I just need to tap my thumb and away we go. Um, I have now upgraded to a passkey, which is awesome. So now uh, anytime I want to use uh, TriBank on this Android phone, I will uh, sign in with a biometric or PIN. Um, and if I did have a second Android phone or let's say an Android tablet, um, you know, that would just work um, day one because the, the passkey would sync over to ensure I don't lose access to my account. So next Christian wanted to sign in to TriBank on his Windows device. Um, so Edge, it could have been Windows on Chrome, whatever it may be. In this case, we just, uh, it's a Surface Go, you know, your average Windows device and Edge and wanted to sign in with the passkey from, for TriBank, right? Because he knew that he's already enrolled that, doesn't want to continue using a password. And this is a great way to leverage the credential that was in Christian's phone over on Windows. Um, so the first time, since this is the first time he wants to use his phone on this Windows device, he does need to link them together. And so when he went into TriBank and clicked sign in, he was presented a QR code. And on the phone, open the camera app, scan the QR code, and you're now prompted to link these devices together. And you'll notice down at the bottom, there's something that says, remember this computer. That will make sure that you don't necessarily need to use the QR code again from this device. You'll get a notification instead, which is a really awesome 
um, step up the user experience to not, obviously we don't want you to have to scan a QR code every time. Now, if this were a shared device, or let's say you didn't want to save um, this linkage, you would uncheck, remember the computer and click allow. And then next time you would get greeted with the same QR code on that laptop. So uh, most users on your personal machine, you should only see the QR code once. So after uh, Christian hit allow, um, user verification happened again, right? We obviously want to make sure the user that is authenticating is present in front of the phone. In this case, again, fingerprint. User verification has been completed. And what we saw here was an important transition, right? We don't want a user to have to use their phone um, every time they're signing into a, uh, something on their laptop or their tablet, right? We That's not a, it's not a very friendly user experience. So the idea is that I can use my phone to bootstrap my laptop so that now I end up with two passkeys, right? So I end up with a passkey on my Android phone and I end up with another passkey. It's not the same one, it's a completely different one tied to the account on my Windows machine so that I no longer have to pull my phone out of the pocket. So to enable that, TriBank essentially said, hey, we detected that you're on Windows. Windows Hello supports passkeys. Why don't you go ahead and set up a Windows passkey, right? And in this case, you'll see that the same web authn call that you know, the TriBank developer made for Android, they make it in this case, and Windows Hello is automatically invoked. We do another user verification check, this time on the laptop, right, because we want to make sure it's bound to the same um, session as the, the logged in user to the laptop. And once that completes, now Windows Hello has a passkey. So for TriBank, Elisa has a Android passkey and, or, you know, there's not a specific name, but a, a passkey in, tied to their Google account, and now a passkey tied to their Windows account. So it's really awesome, two different platforms, two different ecosystems, and I don't no longer have to take my phone out of my pocket to sign in on this Windows machine. Now let's do the same thing on Mac, right? Very, very similar. Um, it's actually nearly identical to um, the Windows experience, except I just wanna show some of the difference in UI, right? Very, very similar though. I want to start with a passkey from Android. So I click on that, you know, Christian clicked on that signed in button and we get this, uh, this Apple prompt, which says, choose how you'd like to sign in. In this case, we wanna actually say, I wanna use another device. In this case, it'll be Android again. I haven't set up an iPhone yet. So I go ahead, sc uh, scan the QR code to pair for the first time. Same thing again, rinse and repeat, user verification to make sure that I'm, you know, Christian was who he said he was on the phone. And when I'm done, same pattern again, um, you can detect that the Apple device actually has local passkey port support as well. And I can go ahead and use the fingerprint reader on my laptop to confirm I'm the user on my laptop and user verification check completes. And now we've more or less bootstrapped the uh, iCloud keychain ecosystem, right? That's Apple's name for um, the password manager and passkey manager. So now this is awesome. Now I have three passkeys, three separate passkeys. We didn't transfer a passkey between platforms. These are all unique passkeys um, that represent each of the ecosystems. So now the last step, I wanna go over to my iPhone. Since the iPhone and the Mac are actually both signed in to the same Apple account and signed into the same iCloud keychain, that passkey is already on that device. And all I need to do is the user verification check to sign in to TriBank. To wrap up here, Alisa now has access to TriBank across all of her devices with three different passkeys, right? One in the Apple ID, one in the Google account, and one in the Microsoft account that are now available across all of her devices. And she no longer needs a password to sign in to TriBank. TriBank may actually prompt her next time to say, hey, we, we think you have uh, multiple devices enrolled. Do you want to remove your password? And that's like, going to be a monumental day for all of these websites to be able to ask the user to do that. Thanks so much, Christian and Tim, for this demo. I think it's really clear how much better our user experiences will be when this sign in tech becomes available. So stay tuned for announcements around that. If you'd like a deeper dive into multi device credentials and how they work, I'd urge you to check out the primer video from Shane Whedon from IBM, which is also available here on the site. Thanks so much for watching.